Hello, my name's Roger, and in today's video I'm going to be making a diorama on the greatest horror film ever made. No, not The Exorcist. No, not Friday the 13th. No, not that one either. This one's going to be based on Evil Dead 2, with a little bit of Evil Dead 1 thrown in for good measure. Groovy! If you've seen the film, you'll get that reference. Here we go, first up, let's get the man in place, use uh, him as the scale. Okay, first off we need to draw the back wall. Dry fit to the frame base, you might have seen from my last one, I like to use frames as the base for all these dioramas. It's cheap, it's easy, what's not to like? I had to suck a lot of lollies to get these sticks. Measure them up and uh, fit them in. If you've seen a film, you'll know that I need to put in a uh, trapdoor. So here I am marking the trapdoor up. Okay, you know they're in place. I can get the glue on. Feature of all my builds, plenty of glue. You stick these in place. I wanted to use thicker wooden panels here uh, to what I'm going to use to the wall. Marking the window, marking the fireplace, using them as a rough guide. That way everything should be in some sort of scale. Okay, there's the two types of sticks. The thinner ones are going to be used on the walls. Again, plenty of glue, cut them all to shape, stick them on, jobs are good. Nice shot here, bit of glue, look at that. Stick these in place. Okay, and here's the three panels uh, for my sauna. As at this point I decided, actually I don't need three panels, I just need two, let's make a corner. So I binned one off. Tidy up the edge in with a bit more of this wood, add a bit of detail here. When it's sprayed, it should look cool. Okay, dry fit them again, super tight now, because the wood's added an extra couple of mil, but it gets there eventually. And there we go. I need to make some window frames now, so stripping a bit of wood apart here. Get my hobby knife out and whittle it down into a piece of wood which is in scale and frame size. And then using the old uh, tweezers here, plenty of super glue, get them in place. At this point I've decided to use uh, foam for the fireplace, not sure why. I think it's probably to do with it having a different texture to the wood. If you've seen a film, you know that they ball up the windows. So here again, I stripped off a bit of wood, roughed it up a bit with the old pliers, nice and blunt now, and stuck these in place with, yep, super glue. Okay, and a different bit of wood again. This was a chopstick, so there's a random one chopstick floating around somewhere. Onto the roof, same procedure, loads of super glue on a bit of card and all these uh, coffee sticks cut to shape. Stick them in place. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. Look at that for an edit. Dry fit the roof. And there's a drone shot showing all the wood built and in place. Onto the hatch now for the trap door. So a small bit of card, again with some roughed up bits of wood. And the chain, just some old chain I had lying around, broke it up, stick it down. And here's the miniatures. So we've got the hero miniature and odds and sods from the Games Workshop range. This is an old Beastman from Games Workshop, probably about 20 years old. And it's going to be the head of the stuffed deer above a mantelpiece. But first off, I need to get rid of two of these horns because uh, I don't think deers have four horns. And over plinth or plaque it's going to be on, so a bit of card, make a rough shape, that will do. Trapdoor, that's in place, 
some old twigs at the garden, break them up, stick them in a the fireplace, and they'll never know. And now I've got a spatula out with some PVA and I'm sprinkling some dirt all over this. The idea is this will be sort of blood and guts. Throw it all on. A bit more glue. It doesn't have to be neat. As with all my builds, the messier the better. And this is the demon guy. So it's an old zombie miniature, I think it is, from the Games Workshop range. And there's a tentacle, stick that one down. Throw a bit more dirt on, sort of blends in. It'll look like blood at some point, I promise. If you've seen the film, you know that the guy changes off his own hand, so not quite in scale, but there's the hand. Well, that's the build done, and as you can see, I used a lot of coffee sticks, so thank you to all the coffee shops out there, and a hell of a lot of super glue. Uh, most of it went on the model, but loads of it did go on my hands, uh, which actually erased all my fingerprints. So the good news is I can get away with pretty much any crime. Build's done, so this is it painted, or at least primed, so it's had a black undercoat and a white overcoat. Right, there's my insane wet palette, so very watered down here, and it's gonna be a sort of base coat wash mapping in all the basic colors, mixing some brown in, a lot of wet blending going on, two or three browns here. I want the floor to be a different color to the walls and the ceiling, so you'll see that shortly. But as you can see, it's very watery, bit of a bloody mess, really. Different color for the wood here, the beams. And these things blocking a window. Onto the roof, so brown with black, wet blending as we go, slap it all on. I want the roof to be darker um, so it doesn't stand out as much uh, when the actual final thing is finished. Look at that. Getting there, it's getting there, don't worry. Onto the walls now, want to go a lighter colour here, adds a bit of contrast, a bit of definition. Uh, insert other words here to describe what I'm doing, but you get the idea. Slap it all on, water down quite a bit. And this demon guy, a bit too watery there, so a bit more thicker paint. Again, base coat it all on. Hasn't got to be neat because he's just been shotgun blasted. Same with that hand, he's cut it off, so it hasn't got to be neat. So this will represent all the guts and grew and blood over the floor, so it's getting a base coat of the same flesh color. All up the walls as well, what a mess. A bit more on the floor. And this guy in the basement, he was the right fiddly one to paint, to be honest. And there we go. Ah oh, yes, the washes. Let's get these on. No oil in the cracks and crevices. Hasn't got to be neat, it's just a bloody wash. Now a uh, right green flesh shade, mix it up a bit, slap it all on. And on here, it will all come together at some point, trust me. All over the floor, on the older deer head, bit of green here, and on the wood. Lots of color, lots of contrast. There's a green washer on his face. And on over this guy, bring those ribs out. Now a red wash in the blood. This will help with a bit of definition on the final stages. More blood up the wall. So much going on. That's what happens when you uh, read the Book of the Dead out loud. No! There we go, washes are done. Slightly finer detail paint in here now, so just picking out various highlights of the original wash shade but this time it's off the wet palette and it's not as watery. So I'm just trying to pick out a bit of detail, help lift some of the uh, some of the models out of the diorama. Here's my little trick for zombie eyes: paint it white, stick that contrast on, done. 
Everyone's hero now, dry brush in. So we've gone in with pale sand all over the wood and on the uh, roof. This really does help bring out the detail, lift everything out of the, uh, out of the piece a lot more. Now a bit of white, not as much of a dry brush, but you can see that wood there already now and on the, the roof does look really good, even if I do say so myself. Bit more dry brush in, that's a nice shot in it. And now for the best bit, blood for the blood gods. I want the red to be the brightest thing in this whole diorama, so um, not sparing anything here, get it all on. So the idea of this is from the film, if you've seen it, is the guy has a fight with demons, cuts off his own hand, uh, demon rises, and he shotgun blasts it into the wall. There's actually more blood in the film than there is in this diorama. A bit of blood on the hatch there, and from where the hand was. I think it's starting to look pretty effective. It's definitely what I was aiming for. Again, a bit more blood up on the walls, up on the ceiling. And that will do it for the blood. And I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. Right, very, very quick now. This is the hero guy, so he's had a white undercoat. He's gonna get a very rough base coat. Once he's had a base coat, I'm gonna give it a wash. Yeah, that hasn't had a wash yet, but trust me, it will. Once it's had that wash, an insane white dry brush. Not sure what I was thinking here. But what I'm now gonna do is use the white areas and paint over them with the original colors, as you can see. Add a bit of blood and he is done. And just before I added him on, he fell apart. But it's pretty much done now, so uh, here we go. That's the painting done, and yeah, I enjoyed that one a lot, uh, mainly because I didn't have to be too neat. Um, the look of it in the film, especially towards the end of the film, is distressed, smashed up, covered in blood and guts and all that sort of stuff. And I mean, what doesn't look good covered in blood? Uh, so yeah, all that's left now is the final reveal. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.